Hi, and welcome to another SEO Hangout with Josh, son of Bachinski. That is me. Um, I'm back in the saddle up in Kanata, and uh, there's all kinds of uh, new SEO shenanigans going on. So, uh, from John Mueller, and so I'll get right to that. Uh, some crazy stuff. Um, we keep getting more and more information every week, so this is good stuff. So, let's get right to it. Okay, so on March 14th, John Mueller had a hangout, and on the 24th, he had a hangout as well, so that's hopefully what I'll cover today. And um, he had a, a bunch of information, and it's just it's all out of order, and so I'm just going to go through it. There's no really rhyme or reason to it, but some of it's very interesting. Um, so one, he claims that the disavow file puts, and I quote, something very similar to a nofollow on the links you put in there. But some have uh, believe, believe that that means that the disavow file has an algorithm that works on a constant basis that will go and disavow your links or that, uh, and I even speculated in the past that perhaps they've written in kind of an if loop in their page rank algorithm that, uh, you know, if in this disavow file do not count for, um, for page rank. But it doesn't seem that it works that way at all, any way, shape, or form. I wish it did. It would probably be better if it did, and it still might, but not according to what John Mueller said in this Hangout. You can watch it yourself if you want to find out. But he basically says that they have to recrawl the links, and then they have to, and I quote, push that data to the algorithm in question, end quote. I repeat that in order for the disavow file to work, they have to push that data to the algorithm in question, which would be probably Penguin. Uh, and or uh, the algorithms for the manual uh, actions. I'm not aware of any other linking algorithms they have. If they have any more, they haven't uh, admitted them. Again, some other SEOs claim to think that they do, and I asked them for their proof as to why they believe this, and I would have accepted any kind of proof, uh, anecdotal observations on their behalf and or leaks, because some of these SEOs happen to be personal friends with John Mueller and have been for years. Uh, long before John Mueller was part of uh, Google, they say, so I asked for their proof and they did not provide any. So not that I don't believe them, it's just that I can only go on the proof that I find. I'm kind of like a scientist in the 18th or 19th century where I don't know a lot about physics, but I'm still looking for evidence. And I'm trying to go off the data that I can get. And if I can't get any data, then I can't admit that I believe it. So I'll have to remain agnostic as to their views in that regard. Um, he also implied, John Mueller also implied, that links with click-through are fine, and that lists of links, which are typically a no-no, a list of links like the old sitemaps, ye olde sitemaps from 1999, uh, you can't do that anymore. It's, it's uh, you, very spammy, it looks very suspect, and it's a low-quality signal for Panda, probably. And it's probably uh, going to bubble up to the manual team for them to look at as well. Um, and maybe one of these linking algorithms that supposedly exists uh, as well. Um, you can't do that anymore. But he said that if he, he directly implied that if the links, uh, sorry, if the list of links have click throughs, as long as those links are clicked on, then it's not bad. So, I mean, that could be a piece of evidence right there that you have other algorithms that track these things uh, and that track or whether or not the links are clicked or not. And then that could. Uh, uh, determine as to whether or not they're spammy or whether or not that bubbles up with the manual team or, or those kinds of things. So so it's interesting. He said that before. I've mentioned he said that before. Uh, it's be interesting to run a test, but it'd be hard to know how to test it exactly. So, But interesting food for thought. Um, so if you're going to have uh, links on your site, especially a big, long, spammy list of them, make sure they're clicked and make sure that uh, people are using them. If not, uh, you know, you could be in some trouble. Okay. Then he went to say this doozy, and so here's a doozy for you. John Mueller said that even if the page is no indexed, that they will still penalize for unnatural links, uh, both possibly the target page sending the link and the page, the no index page that's getting the link. I repeat, he stated that they will still uh, give a manual penalty, uh, or he just said penalty, so he's probably meaning manual penalty, although sometimes he might mean uh, penguin, even though he would then say, well, we don't consider Penguin a penalty, we consider it just part of our algorithms, it's not a penalty, blah, 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 blah. Um, But he did state that uh, even if the page, even if the target page is no index, the page sending the link 
could get a penalty or this page could get a penalty. Therefore, he says, you should no follow the links as well. Um, wow. Uh, this directly contradicts some things he said previously uh, about Penguin. So I don't think this comment was about Penguin for those two pieces of evidence. One that he said previously that if you know index, then it'll be fine for Penguin. And two, that if you, um, that he doesn't call Penguin a penalty, he calls it a demotion. So he's probably talking about the manual penalty there. So that means that they will possibly give the site, because it's a site-wide penalty, even if the page is no indexed, uh, a, a possible penalty. And because at the end of the day, the reason why he has to say possibly there is probably because it's manually determined. A human being, a rather draconic and uh, arrogant and increasingly elitist a manual web spam, web spam team member is going to make the judgment calls to whether or not the whole site deserves a uh, manual action because the link's pointing to a page even though it's no, no indexed. Because at the end of the day, people can still see it. And so I guess, even though John Mueller specifically did say before, and also regarding a manual penalty, that you can no index these pages. He said in regards to a manual penalty, in, in, in regards to Panda, and in regards to Penguin, that a no index is like a, you're tapping out. That's like a, uh, you're saying uncle, and they're not supposed to count that page for any algorithms. Well, then he backtracked on a lot of that, um, and now he's backtracking on it more. So I don't know if their policies have changed, if they're becoming more draconian, or if he's just clarifying the mistake that he made previously. But, so, wow. That's a doozy um, for a lot of people, because a lot of people rely on the no-index, thinking it's going to get them out of trouble. It's not always going to get you out of trouble. And speaking of trouble, uh, here's another doozy for you. A negative SEO exploit, uh, another one was kind of released. Now, I've mentioned this one previously, um, but uh, it was more hush-hush and secret. Now I'm just going to mention it and throw it out there. And whoever wants to test this, let me know how it goes. Um, if a competitor has a roboted out page, apparently Google will still count some of the semantic latent index of the anchor text associated with the link pointing at the page, even if it is roboted out and they can't confirm that page is about said topic. For example, you could send a page child porn links or Viagra, buy Viagra links, and if the page is roboted out, Google will still think it's associated with what you said, uh, the links you sent at it, uh, but this is, this is implied directly by John Mueller. But um, they won't be able to confirm it. So they won't be able to uh, deny it, actually. So uh, this, this helps us a couple things. One, their regular algorithms use a two-stage process, which makes sense, that you have links that say it's uh, about Herbal Viagra, and then if the page says it's about Herbal Viagra, they say, oh, okay, that's about Herbal Viagra. Um, however, that's how they, they protect against some negative SEO because you can just, you know, spam uh, a page with a bunch of um, uh, uh, child porn links or whatever, you know, being the nice people, the SEOs that you are. Uh, and uh, it used to be pretty easy to Google bomb a page like that. That's what that was called Google bombing or link bombing. So some of the logic they built in to protect against that apparently was a check of of link A to page B. If there's a correlation there, then they'll believe it. If there's not a correlation, they won't. But if there's a, if the if this target is roboted out and they can't tell that it is or is not about page B, they'll or their algorithms will partially assume that it is, and apparently that's gonna be a problem for you. He mentions in this uh, uh, hangout, or uh, I think implies in this hangout. This is this is my take on what he said. So I don't I can't remember exactly where in the hangout he says it, but you can watch it yourself and tell me that I'm wrong. So, um, and this could be an issue, it could bubble you up for the manual team, and of course the manual team might realize that there is no problems with your site and not give you a penalty. Uh, but there could be other, um, that could be part of a panda algorithm or a quality algorithm as well, so they're going to algorithmically uh, distrust the site more because it has this distrusting factors pointing at it. So watch out for that. And you know who would be a good target for these kinds of things, you know, just hypothetically, academically speaking. Uh, WordPress. WordPress automatically sets up a robot text for a, a number of directories. Uh, WordPress includes WordPress admin. So you could, in theory, if your competitor is running WordPress, which probably most of them are, you could, in theory, point a bunch of child porn links, fire up Xbox 
uh, as Xbox. Don't fire up your Xbox. That won't help you here. Fire up Scrapebox or X Rumor uh, or SE Nuke, anything like that, and fire a bunch of uh, tens of thousands of uh, child porn or herbal Viagra links at the site, and that's roboted out, and see what happens. I uh, do not condone uh, anything immoral, and I do recommend that maybe you should test this on your own site, but et cetera, yada, yada, disclaimer, disclaimer. Okay, so on March 24th, there were some more doozies that uh, John Mueller mentioned, so I'll, we'll get to those in a second. Here's a doozy. The second's over. Here's a doozy. Um, he claims the links that they don't show in Webmaster Tools are more or less what they are ignoring. I repeat. He claims that the links that they don't show in Webmaster Tools, uh, because someone said, hey, John, why, when we look in Ahrefs and we look in Majestic and we look in link research tools from Kemper, which is the best one in my opinion, Kemper's link research tools, um, because it uses them all and it's got much better data, but it's much more expensive, that's why. Um, why is it this shows you know way more links than Webmaster Tools does? Even though Webmaster Tools gives you more links now uh, in terms of the... Uh, the um, the main list of links that it gives you, and then you should download the, the latest links as well, and it'll give you even more links. You can get you know, well over 100,000 links out of the thing, but still, some sites have more, so they have some sites have millions of links. And so they asked, well, why is it that Webmaster Tools give you so much less? And John Miller's response was, um, Webmaster Tools only shows you the links that you need to worry about. And I quote, um, the links that, quote, you need to focus on, end quote. He claims they don't show you the links in Webmaster Tools that are more or less what they are ignoring. So, ah, this is interesting. So you could do a lot with this, right? One, you can take a look at, you can do a comparison of the links that Link Research Tools shows you, for example, and the links that Webmaster Tools shows you. And this will, one, academically speaking, uh, it'll be very interesting in that it'll show you the kind of links that Google is automatically ignoring if you weren't already aware of what kind of links those are. Generally, the research that I've done for the last couple of years now shows that it's any kind of public post link, directory, article directory, those kinds of things, um, uh, forum links, uh, excessive uh, footer or sidebar links, they kind of ignore them to a degree, uh, but then I'll also bubble over the manual team, those ones. And uh, also links that are on any kind of guest blog post or any kind of new blog, any kind of auto blog, any kind of spam blog. Uh, any kind of duplicated blog, those kinds of things. I'll automatically ignore those kinds of links. And you'll uh, definitely see that, uh, or like any kind of .ru Russian kind of site links, or any kind of .co kind of links, those kinds of things. So you'll definitely see that if you look at the comparison between what Leak Research Tools will show you, or Majestic, whatever, and uh, what um, Webmaster Tools will show you. But also that's important that if you look at the links that Webmaster Tools shows you, that shows you the links they are counting. So it shows you the kind of anchor text they're counting, that shows you the kind of links they're counting, the kind of link sources they're counting, but either positively or negatively. So don't just use that as, oh, I'll go build those kinds of links. Those are both the good links and the bad links, right? Those are the best of the best and the worst of the worst that they're showing you Webmaster Tools. And John Mueller has said that in that Hangout, and he said that previously in numerous times. So it's good to pay attention to those kinds of links they're showing you in there and see, okay, these are the links they think are great, and these are the links they think are bad. So maybe I should disavow these if you believe that it's going to do anything for you, or maybe preemptively want to do that, even though you, you will risk shooting yourself in the foot. I repeat, you risk shooting yourself in the foot when you do that. Um, probably shouldn't do that unless you really know what you're doing. Um, uh, but at the very least, you can not build any more links that look like the bad ones, because it should be pretty obvious, glaringly good and glaringly not looking so good. Okay, um, he did mention that if you're keyword overstuffing, they have an algorithm that runs on a regular basis that they will demote you in search. So uh, again, keyword stuffing, overstuffing is a huge problem. Uh, I'm going to go out and say it. Yoast SEO plugin and all-in-one SEO plugin, please, by all means, tell the people who wrote these uh, SEO plugins, I think they suck. I said it. I know it's heresy to say. I know everyone will be like, what? Yoast is supposed to be wonderful. It's not. And I'll tell you why, and this is actually John Mueller telling you why, so it's not just me. Um, because, and although, and maybe it could be I'm an idiot, I, I admit I don't like WordPress, I don't use it very much. Um, so maybe there's a way to tailor it or toggle it that it doesn't do this autom automatically out of the box. But last time I looked, a year or so ago, it did this automatically out of the box. That it will take your keywords you put in to these, these tools, and it will stuff them in the title attribute and the alt attribute. 
The title and alt attribute is not a tag, it's an HTML attribute, part of a tag, that gets stuck into a link tag or an anchor tag or an image tag, things like that. And it'll take your keywords and stuff them in there so that your page ends up when you're running Yoast or running all-in-one by default. Uh, and I think maybe, I don't, I don't even know if there's a way to turn this off, quite frankly. Um, it will stuff them in there, and John Mueller specifically said, don't do this. They have a keyword stuffing algorithm that looks for this and any other kind of keyword stuffing you've got going on. So I said, don't use those uh, SEO plugins. I'm building some SEO plugins that are better. This is not the reason why I'm saying it. Don't use my SEO plugins. I don't care what SEO plugins you use. Just, I see this again and again for clients. Don't do this. Don't think that just because everyone thinks Yoast is great that you will install it and it will help you. You don't even know what it's doing. And in fact, in this case, it's going to hurt you. So don't do that. And Yoast or all in one if you're watching this, yes, I said it, and I'll stand by it. And if you really want to know what I'm talking about, by all means, contact me. But I think what I said was pretty clear. Don't stuff the title attribute and the alt attribute with keywords because John Mueller specifically said not to do it. He's also specifically said they have an algorithm that runs on a regular basis looking for that kind of stuff. Um, okay, here's an interesting thing. So, so someone gave a site to John Mueller to look at, and they publicly announced it. So I'm not outing these people. They publicly announced it. It's 8coupons.com. That's the letter, uh, the letter, the number 8, <laughs> the letter 8, the number 8, coupons.com. And they're wondering, what is wrong with our, our site? And uh, is it links? Our links are bad. We should disavow them. So bah, first off, don't disavow any links. Ah. Don't disavow any links unless you really know what you're doing, and most people don't, so don't disavow your links. One. Two, John Mueller said basically the same thing. Uh, three, he said it's not links or the problem with this site, it's Panda is the problem with this site. There's a quality problem with your site. And then he got into some, so here's a doozy for you, he got into some really nice detail about what Panda didn't like on this site. And uh, wow, he only mentioned this in passing before, so this is a huge thing he just, I'm about to say, drum roll, brrr, John Mueller said that uh, they track, the, he directly implied that they track if people jump to another site right away, and they track, they want to rank the ultimate target for the query. So for example, if there's the SERP, and they go to your site, and your site sends them to, uh, sorry, another site right away, they track that. He's mentioned before they track that with ads, even AdSense, and he mentioned before that um, he tracked that with affiliate sites. So this is not an affiliate site, it's a coupon site. So you imagine people will go to the site legitimately looking for a coupon, they find it, and they go to buy something, right? John Miller said, no, you can't do this. If they see this too much, their algorithms will assume, well, the site that you're going to is, is the better solution for that query. So they'll just remove your site and rank the other site in its place. And how do they tell this? They tell this by directly tracking. Uh, he, direct, he implied pretty strongly that they, they track this by tracking what people do on the site. If they click away, he said, and I'm pretty much, I'm paraphrasing, but I'm pretty much quoting. If they click away right away, then the, they'll rank the other site. Vis-a-vis, -vis, they are tracking clicks on the site. Um, so if you've been paying attention to my Hangouts, you've been paying attention to what's been going on, Google is directly tracking what users are doing on the site. Don't say, can they do this? Of course they can do this. It is lunacy to ask whether or not a company that has $40 billion of profit, that is a pioneer in the tech industry, whether or not they can do anything. Of course they can do it. The only question is whether or not they will go so far as to do it. And whether or not Google will go so far as to do something, you should not be really asking that question anymore either if you've been paying attention to my Hangouts or the tech industry, or the search industry for the last, you know, since Panda. You know, they will, they will, they'll do it, they'll go there. And they, they have, and John Mueller has basically admitted, he's admitted this before and he's admitted again, they will basically go there. Don't believe me? Here's the quotes. He said, and I quote, make a site people want to stay on, end quote. Quote, you need them to recommend your site, end quote. So you need to get social in relation to this, links in relation to this. You need them to, quote, go to your site directly, end quote, and not going to another site, and, quote, don't make it a jumping board for another site. Um, so this is my belief. This is what I believe he was implying uh, directly and stating. So you can go there and check it out yourself if you don't believe me. Um, also, he did mention something very interesting. And uh, I'll probably break to another screen in a second to show you. Um, he said that 
the algorithms did not see an issue with the site's links. So if you want to check out uh, 8coupon.com, their links, and see in Ahrefs, uh, so I, I'm just going to mention it here. I'm not going to bother because I'm lazy, quite frankly. I'm not going to bother going to another screen to show you, but you can run it in Ahrefs yourself. It's 8coupons.com. You'll see what I'm talking about. If you, look, if you scroll down and look at the anchor phrases, you'll see their anchor phrases look like this. It, uh, the first, the, the highest percentage is some URL, 8coupons.com slash discount slash some law firm Sacramento. Um, and then more details, homepage, 8coupons.com, 8 coupons, uh, more long URLs. This is all their anchor text, their biggest anchor text, 30%, 30%, 10%, that's linking to them. And then down at the bottom, they might have something a little bit more spammy, free as 10 spa and wellness gift card, card accepted this spa, click, learn, click here to learn more. Those uh, banquet hall in Dallas, Texas, that's getting more spammy, but it's only like 2%, right? The, most of their links are domain links that are not also search phrases. 8coupons.com is not a search phrase. No one's, you know, very few people are searching for that. If they're, to use my favorite example, I'm sorry uh, that I'm a, I'm sorry that I always use my favorite example, but it is my favorite, that's why I use it. If they're trying to sell red apples and their site was buyredapples.com, if they use that as an anchor text, that's a search phrase anchor text. That's not going to be okay just because it's also their brand name. But 8coupons.com is not a search phrase anchor text. It's not a commercial anchor text. Coupons is, but 8coupons.com is not. So you can be a partial match. That's fine. And so they're not going to get into trouble for that. So those kind of anchor texts are fine. And John Mueller specifically said he ran it through his algorithms, uh, his algorithm uh, for, for detecting bad links behind the scenes at Google. And it said that his links were fine, more or less fine. So... Again, that's another good indication of what kind of linking you should be doing. Whether you're a white hat, black hat, polka dot hat, a periwinkle hat, or orange hat, it doesn't matter. And those are real things, by the way. Those are just as subjective and made up as black hat and white hat. Um, <laughs> sorry, I joke. Um, so I've totally lost my train of thought making a dumb joke. This is why I couldn't host the Tonight Show. Like Jimmy Fallon, he's wonderful. He can kind of go off with Higgins and do these things, and I, I can hey, Watch the Tonight Show, you'll see. Anyway, so um, this is a good indication of what kind of links you can use, uh, what kind of anchor text you can make, and what kind of anchor text you can't make, and a good indication that John Mueller is saying that, hey, these, these links are good, uh, and, and uh, they didn't find any problems with them. And, it does, and again, th ah, that was my point. Aha. Uh -huh. Brains. Uh, that was my point, is that um, it doesn't matter if you think you're white hat or black hat or you think you're periwinkle hat. It doesn't matter whether you think you're above board or not. Google doesn't give two shites. They are going to penalize you whether they whether if you fit the, the, the profile. If you fit the algorithmic profile, you're going to get a penalty anyway, whether or not the links were completely donated. So it doesn't matter whatsoever. Okay, just as a mention that uh, they had 33% site-wide links, that site, and they had 10% no-follow. So I don't think that made a difference, that 33% of their links were site-wide paid links, obviously, from some site. Um, but that is a really good indication that, again, Google looked at that and didn't see any problem. So Ahrefs uh, reported that they had 33% site-wide, obviously, paid links, and that was, uh, or footer links of some kind, and that was fine. I wouldn't go any higher than that. That might be why John Mueller said more or less fine, uh, because that could be getting close to the cusp. I've speculated it's around 40%, 50%. Um, so they had Ahrefs reported that they had 33% site-wide links. Site-wide links are a bunch of sites that their entire site links to you. So it's like a footer link or a sidebar link, something like that. So uh, that's another interesting thing that uh, we have John Mueller directly indicating that that's, that's okay-ish, maybe getting a little bad. I wouldn't go any higher than that. And they had 10% nofollow. Uh, SEO Moz has long speculated, and some others have speculated, that having a percentage of nofollow links looks natural, and it might be a bit of a get-out-of-jail-free card if you have some of those. I don't know if that's true. Uh, their latest correlation data does not really seem to bear that out very strongly. Uh, so I leave that for your discerning judgment. All right. Now we're getting into things, uh, a couple more things for this particular Hangout and his particular Hangout. So uh, somebody asked, uh, John, what's the difference? Because in HTML5 and CSS3, you can make anything clickable. You, you, you Actually, you could make anything clickable since 1999 with the on-click event handler. Um, so you don't need to actually have a link. You can have no links on your site, and people can still navigate by using JavaScript, right? And they're supposed to be getting better at reading JavaScript. And so somebody asked, 
John, what's the difference between having a div with an on click that people can click or an href, an actual anchor tag link? And John Mueller said this before, but he said it again. It's, it's kind of interesting. He said that the div on click, the JavaScript click, is not going to pass page rank, uh, but they can follow it. Uh, and he said something very interesting. He said, they only allow something that you have the option of putting a nofollow on to pass page rank. Because if you decline to put a nofollow on it, it is a positive vote for putting juice on it, right? To say, so it's kind of a weird double negative. So if you decline to put a nofollow on it, you're saying, yes, I want it to be followed and counted for the algorithm and, and pass positive link juice. So they only automatically will put link juice on something that you've declined to put a nofollow on it because you do not have the option of putting a nofollow on an on-click or a JavaScript click. Therefore, uh, they won't put any page rank on it. Okay, thank you for that compl complicated programmer speak of way of explaining it. However, they will click click it. They will they will crawl it. <laughs> they will they will yes they will click it. They will crawl it. Uh, but don't use that for internal linking. So if you've decided to use like div div on clicks or JavaScript clicks for your internal linking because you thought you'd be HTML5 CSS, CSS3 cool, don't because it's not SEO cool. Um, uh, which you know SEO cool is not really so cool anymore, which is good. Less people doing SEO means it's easier for us to rank and make money. <laughs> okay. Um, finally, uh, what about RSS feeds? A lot of people swear by RSS feeds that um, you, can, you can just spam all your articles out to RSS feeds and you can get links back. Some people think this is wonderful and it's a great link building uh, tactic and lots of people think this and there's lots of tools and expensive programs that will do this. And um, uh, other people say, isn't this spammy? Isn't this a spammy thing to do? Isn't this like Black Hat? Joe Muir says no, because they ignore RSS feeds. Our, the, the feed of the RSS feed itself is not an HTML page. It's an RSS feed. It's a different protocol. It's a different technology. And so there is no anchor tag in it because it doesn't have tags in it, right? It might have tags in it, but it's not HTML. And so they don't they don't read it like HTML, and so they don't count any of the links in there as do follow links, as I just explained. And so, because you don't have the option of putting a nofollow on it, and so they don't pass any page rank from it. So it's a nofollow link, and they will spider the nofollow links, and they will use nofollow links for their semantic latent index. So it's not that it's useless, it can be quite useful, especially if Google is having trouble determining what that page is about or that it doesn't have a lot of votes that it is about buy red apples. So for example, if you're having a site, a page that's having trouble ranking for buy red apples, and it says buy, this is the best page to buy red apples, get our best red apples, $10.99. Woohoo, that's a good price for red apples. Uh, $1,099, um, or, or $10.99, maybe rubles, uh, rupees, I don't know. So um, if you're having trouble getting that page ranked for buy red apples, you can throw like 10,000 nofollow links at it that say buy red apples. Exact match search phrase anchor text, blah, right to the right to the nine, right, right to the nines, because um, they're no follow. And so, unless Google is going to lie to us again, which this would be a really big lie if they did, because they've said very strongly they will never do this, um, just like they said some other things, but they said they would never do this. Um, that they don't count no follow in terms of page rank. So you can make whatever no follow links you want, and you're not violating their 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 guidelines. So that's a good way to tell Google that, hey, I you can buy red apples on this page without running afoul of any penalties. And that's what I recommend you do first before going and actually trying to make do follow links and any white hat because it's difficult or black hat because it's risky any of the ways, right? And you might actually, because you might actually train Google to think that it, it is about that, that topic. Actually, sorry, to say it another way. You will add evidence to Google to tell it for sure, definitely, that it is about that topic. Whether or not it's enough for you to rank is another matter because the nofollow links don't have any juice. It will just make the page that wasn't ranking for the topic before rank for that topic. So it was ranking up spot 286 because Google didn't think statistically it was very much about, about red apples. When you put the 10,000 nofollow buy red apples links at it, it will suddenly start ranking at spot 86 for it. So statistically, that's a huge jump up. 
Of course, not as high as you'd like. You'd like to be on page one, of course. So then you're going to have to start throwing some do follow links at it and do so safely, or social, or you know, uh, trending traffic, or internal links uh, for those kinds of things. But not spammy buy red apple internal links either. Can't do that either. You can't make exact match search phrase anchor links anywhere because that is against their guidelines all over the place. And you should even worry if they're being donated at this point because they're getting stupid. Um, so try the nofollow trick. So think of it this way. Think think of it that nofollow links have like, each nofollow link has like 0.001 page rank, whereas a regular do follow link from a PR1 page would have like, like 0.1. So it's just way diluted page rank, but it will help you rank. And there's nothing against their guidelines in making them, so spam the internet away. Of course, they only care about spam that affects their index that they have to clean up. Um, they don't actually care about spam morally. It's not like they're doing us a moral favor trying to clean up the internet of spam. That's a load of crap. That's just, that's just their public relations Bernaysian bull crap speak. Uh, so go ahead and, and it's not even against their guidelines and they won't even care if you spam the internet with 100,000 nofollow links that they will spider. And that's their problem if they decide to spider everything and categorize everything and not make an algorithm as discerning and will just ignore nofollow links. Um, so that's their issue. Of course, the flip side of that is that because Google is the one with the power in this uh, power relation, to use social psycho psychological speak, they are the one who can dictate the rules and dictate what is moral in this regard and suddenly change the, the, the rules of what are moral. At least they think they can. They really can't. And I'm, I'm going to be writing an article about how they really can't. Uh, I have a master's degree and half a PhD in ethics, and uh, for what it's worth. And I'm going to be writing an article about their, their morality or the lack thereof very shortly. In fact, just for my listeners, I just might read the letter for you, <laughs> just because I love the sound of my own voice, which is why anybody goes in academia, by the way, uh, and, uh, or makes videos like this. And uh, because, you know, it's, it's good for a laugh. And so I just might, maybe I will, but at the very least, I will, of course, give the link to it here so you can, you can go and read it yourself. But for anyone who loves to hear me rant, maybe I'll just read it out to you. Uh, I dropped the occasional F-bomb, and, you know, it's it's good fun. So that is my SEO Hangout for today, my frenetic, all-over-the-place SEO Hangout. Some very interesting stuff dropped down there. Um, so if you have any questions, as always, you can always contact me, uh, joshpashinsky at gmail.com, if you have any SEO questions, or you can follow me at Twitter, at joshpashinsky, or you can uh, watch videos like this uh, with other wonderful amazing SEO leaks and secrets and experimental data uh, and SEO observations from myself and rants, read lots of rants, from myself at youtube.com slash jbashins. That's J-B-A-C-H-Y-N-S. So again, thanks for listening and uh, good luck in the SERPs and uh, we'll be ranting at you soon. Bye-bye.